Brighton versus Liverpool, Saturday, 3 o'clock. And now this is a, another tough game to call, I think, on the match odds. We'll take a look at the betting. Brighton currently uh, 5 to 2 or 3.5 on the matchbook betting exchange. Liverpool are favourites at 2.2. The draw is 3.85. Both teams have scored, yes, a very short price here at 1.56. No, it's 2.7. <laughs> Brighton getting a quarter of a goal head start at 2. 2.06. And the goal line is very high here at 3.0. So on that goal line, Mark, we'll go straight back to you. Um, Liverpool are a tough team to place at the moment, but in fairness, there are their games are entertaining, if nothing else. They are, yeah. Um, I wouldn't be backing at these at these prices the way at Brighton. Um, I think the most straightforward selection on the Premier League card this weekend is the back goals in this game, actually. Um, and you know, I would be interested in getting Brighton on side, but I just think back goals. Um, Brighton will win less than five under Deserby, but they've now tabled four wins from six. They're creating chances, but I think more importantly, they're taking those chances as well, more so than they probably ever have done in the Premier League era, really. They scored 32 games, 32 goals this season, twice as many as they managed this way, this stage of the season last season. It's their best top flight return since 1977. Um, Virgil van Dijk is missing for Liverpool. You know, you could say that's a, an omen, really, for the Reds, the way he's played this season domestically. Um, but even so, they haven't been anywhere near trustworthy on their travels, Liverpool. Eight of their 28 points have been earned away. They've lost three of the last seven across all venues in the Premier League as well. This isn't the Liverpool we've become accustomed to, really. Um, I think defensively they are gettable, but Brighton are too. I was quite surprised to learn Brighton have managed one clean sheet in the league since August. So that's a 13-game sample. They've kept one clean sheet. Overs has copped in 10 of those, BTDS in 10 of those. There's been 51 goals in those 13 games, which uh, translates to 3.92 goals per game. If you look at Deserby's time, again, goals over two and a half goals and BTDS stand out like a sore thumb, starting with a three all away at Anfield where they took that sort of front foot approach. And they've continued that against uh, almost every opponent they've played, regardless of their reputation or their stature. They played five of the big six. You could say only the match against Spurs failed to really ignite. They were excellent at Anfield, superb at the Etihad absolutely thrashed Chelsea at the Amex. I thought they were pretty good against Arsenal, despite the scoreline. Um, so, you know, I expect Brighton to be very much front foot here. I think their style, their approach tends to lend itself to, to open and exciting games. Six of the last seven have gone over three and a half, all seven over two and a half. Actually, these two clubs have managed just four clean sheets all season in the Premier League. Only three clubs have kept fewer, which is quite a damning statement against Liverpool there. But uh, most of their matches away from home have been high scoring as well. So, over two and three quarter goals at 1.75. Um, it's been clipped in from around about 1.8 earlier in this week. I wouldn't be too surprised to see it get, get shorter either. You know, you're guaranteed a profit if, uh, if there's three goals or more in this game, a full stakes if there's four or more. Uh, I'd be very surprised if this game sort of fails to fire. Yeah, and Adrian, you're in agreement in terms of the goal line here, but I, I'm interested in your other play, which potentially favours Liverpool. Do you think they're a small bit overpriced considering the talent they do have still? No, I wouldn't say overpriced, but... I wouldn't write them off. I think that Mark's selection is is the favourite. Yeah, I think that's the safest bet. But I just wanted to offer up an alternative in Liverpool and both teams to score. Um, obviously, Arsenal won there. Both teams scored 4-2. Um, Aston Villa went there and won, even though it was fortuitous, 2-1. Um, both teams scored. So that's in their last two home games. They've actually, Brighton, got the lowest share of points from home games this 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 season in the league. 41% of their points haul has come from games at the Amex. Um, so, so they're not the best at home. And we know how many chances Liverpool create. I mean, Nunez, gets, he gets about three big chances every game. Salah is always going to get chances. You, you can chuck Cody Gakpo into the mix now as, a, as an option. I think they're going to have their moments in this match. And Brighton's defence, as we saw against Arsenal, is it's a little bit wobbly under De Serbi. It's not quite as well organised as it as it was previously, but they're better going forward and, and we can see that. So, yeah, I can see, absolutely see goals, but I wouldn't back against Liverpool. On I wouldn't sort of write off Liverpool is what I'm saying. Um, Virgil van Dijk's absence, you think about it, it's, oh, that's bad news, but there is a stat out there that they're unbeaten in the last 14 matches without Virgil van Dijk, 11 of those were wins, Liverpool. So they've been able to cope without him okay. Um, yeah, I just think at 3. Uh, 3.7, back in Liverpool and both teams to score, is something to think about as a sort of midway long shot. So yeah, I'm just chucking that one out there. 
Yeah, that's an interesting play. And Miguel, um, on Liverpool, so they're about seven points off top four. I actually can't, I, I've been watching Virgil van Dijk and he hasn't been playing well this season, but I still can't believe that stat that Adrian's just read out there. Yeah, it's remarkable. But actually, not that surprising, given he just, he just hasn't really looked himself lately. Uh, but no, I suppose he recovered a little bit in the World Cup. Uh, but I think that was because Van Gaal's system was so backloaded necessarily because of where... How, um, Holland's strengths lay and now I'm going to actually go back on my own World Cup four maybe where I was quite conservative during the World Cup but now I'm going stronger because I think because of all the things the lads have mentioned uh, I, I'm actually I have to say I am I was, just as they were talking I was almost kind of second guessing my own my own uh, call given that I'm tempted to go for Liverpool in this because I, I think there's always that sense it never, it never quite gets too bad but then it never gets so good so they always kind of correct themselves a little uh, but that's almost undercut them with the feeling as well we've had throughout the season that at the moment it's just a mistake to bank on Liverpool because you never know what you're going to get with them. But I think you will get goals. I think for everything the lads have said, Liverpool will create a lot of chances against the Brighton that can be porous. I think this could be one of those games where potentially it's, it's one of those where Liverpool kind of show themselves a bit or make up for recent where there's a bit of vengeance about it. They get one and they get three or four. I think that it has potential for that. But brought equally at the other end, Right, you know, I think Liverpool will just cough up chances to Brighton. They're a higher scoring team than they were under Potter. And yeah, I think that this could be one of those that goes to 2 3, 3 4, either way, even. Tempted to go for Liverpool, but <laughs> I'm going on the safe side uh, over 3.5. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 think it'll be, I think it'll be sufficiently high scoring. Yeah. yeah, over th- over three and a half goals is a good price, 2.48. And Mark's locked in over two and three quarter goals and 1.75. That's probably the bet we'll put up here on the podcast. It is the bet we'll put up on the podcast. But Adrian does have an interesting play. Liverpool and both teams to score 3.7 does seem quite big considering that Brighton's four. 